Hey guys, so today I am going to show you how I now make the stencils to etch my logo onto my knives. Completely change the way I do it. Very simple, very cheap and it works. Over to the bench. Hey, I did a video quite a while ago now about making stencils with the Etchomatic system. Uh, they're light sensitive stencils. The problem with that system is the stencils in this country anyway have become stupidly expensive and they don't last very long and they're very 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 finicky when it comes to applying the light and washing off the film and I just found a much better method which I'm going to show you now. This is kind of the same thing but you make up the stencils yourself and these are the stencils I've been using for probably over a year now and they are awesome. The other stencils I use are the ones that my son makes and these are a vinyl stencil in which you peel off the back you stick the stencil down then you peel off the front and you got straight through the image so you can etch through it. These are probably slightly better than these in so much as you don't get any discoloration around the stencil because the vinyl protects them, the steel around the stencil. My son does these if you're interested if you want to contact him I'll leave an email in the description box below if you can't be bothered making your own. Uh, there's also Boompus Forge in the US I'll put a link to his website. He did me some stencils a while ago um, to put around the shop and uh, appreciate that, thanks. So this is how I've been doing these anyway. And um, what you're gonna need is, you're gonna need some mesh. And this is like this, just like screen printing really. That's what we're doing, but we're making up the screens. And you can get these at the, at the supply houses that supply stuff for screen printing. Have a, have a Google, you'll find them. In the UK, this I think it was art for screen, screens, arts for something or other. I can't remember, guys. It was a year ago now. Um, this stuff is really cheap. I bought, I think, a couple of square metres, maybe three square metres, which was probably about six or seven quid. The other thing you'll need is the light sensitive emulsion. That one was about 12 or 15 pounds, um, 0.9 kilo, which is probably a bit over a litre. This isn't the one I ordered. The one I ordered was had a longer shelf life when it was mixed, it was sort of an indefinite shelf life. The one they've sent me, once you've mixed it, it's got a, they say about a three to four month shelf life. Well, take that with a pinch of salt because about six months after I'd mixed this, it was still okay. So um, what I did initially, I'd measure, I tipped out half of that, weighed it, tipped half out, and you mix it with this powder, which is kind of, I think it's probably the light sensitive powder, I'm not sure. You mix that with that, and there's your emulsion. Well I mixed half of that and I weighed and I mixed half of that. Next time I do it I'm going to weigh out the remaining half and the remaining half so I'm kind of using a third then. You don't need much of this to do one screen so uh, if you buy one of them I think that's the smallest you can get it's going to last you forever literally. So this is a cheap and easy way of making stencils. All you need to do is knock yourself up a frame uh, this was so simple, just some scrap bits of wood stapled on the corners with a bit of glue to hold it together. I'll show you quickly how I put the screen on. The me this mesh from memory is about a 100 mesh, which I'm pretty sure is the amount of meshes per inch or something like that. Um, it doesn't really matter what mesh you get, that's an even finer one. It's an even finer mesh and they both work well. So what I do, just start off, put staple in that corner, pull it tight, pull it tight along there, staple that corner, pull it tight from along there, staple that corner, and pull it tight on both corners from on that one. So you're pulling that way, so you're tightening that one and that one. And then you put a little tension on the centre. And pull the centre taut. And you do the same there, a little tension. Pull it taut. Same there. Pull it taut. Then centre at this end, taut, pull it tight, and then you literally go between each one of them 
putting tension on. Pull them little folds out. There's your screen. You can cut the excess off there. So that's your, basically that's your screen. That's as tight as it needs to be, as long as it's stretched. Take it outside and wash it. Give it a good scrub in, wash it, let it dry. What you'll need to do is mix up your emulsion. You'll need a spreader. I made this one, it's just a bit of rubber on a bit of perspex. You don't actually need the rubber. As long as you've got a straight edge, you just get a sander and round that edge over, the perspex edge, and that'll do to apply the emulsion. There are videos on applying emulsion to screens. Essentially, you need the screen just set at a bit more of an angle than that. You want it about 45. So you pour your emulsion onto the spreader. And then you kind of tip your spreader up until it flows onto that edge. Then with one stroke, pull it up to the top. You can scoop out the remaining emulsion and it will be lying on your spreader. Now turn your screen over and do the same again. Pull your emulsion up. You should have a nice even coat on there when it's done. If not, just go over it again. I made that spreader to fit this actual screen. I've used that screen quite a few times now. And then you can just wash the emulsion off or scrape it back into the tub. Right with that done, put your screen somewhere flat. Cover it. So you don't want to be doing this by the way in any form of direct sunlight because it will cure the emulsion. So you want to be doing it kind of in the workshop like this. It's okay if it's light but no direct sunlight. Uh, so I, I usually put a, put a block under each corner lay it flat, put another block on them corners and put a piece of card over it, a piece of cardboard just to protect it. It takes about 12 hours to dry. You can also get a hairdryer on if you want and if you're impatient like me and want to speed up the process. When the screen set or when it's dry, what I was doing, I was just cutting out the screen completely um, and then I was cutting up my, stens my light sensitive film Put it on a piece of glass, put your logo, which you print on acetate, on the top. I'm never going to line that up, am I? How about that? Near enough. <laughs> there we go. Slight, I do these in slightly different sizes, so it is a different size, that one. Put another piece of glass on top, just to trap them together and stop them moving. And you just expose that to sunlight. Uh, so you have your film on this side, so it's obviously acting as a barrier. Now you can put it in the sunlight if it's sort of lunchtime and there is some sunlight. Um, it needs, you'll have to just experiment a little bit with this guys until you get to know the times. I did it for about 35, 40 seconds was enough. Take it indoors, take your stencil off. Hold that tight, run it under the cold water tap each side. You will see the film starts to come off and what it is, the film around the stencil has been cured by the UV. The emulsion underneath the stencil hasn't cured so you can wash it out. You can get a little cotton bud, put it in the, under the, in the sink with the water running on top of it and just gently go over it with the cotton bud. Just go easy but you will see it start to wash out. And I, I recommend that you do that first so that you, you know what the setting times are for your screen. Going forward now as I know I will be printing out an A, cutting that in half, it's an A4, two A4s. So I'll be printing out on an A4 sheet a whole row of stencils or logos. And then I will be exposing the whole thing 
and then I will wash the whole thing off in one go. It's much easier doing it that way than individually. You can use them about three, four times. There's one there, which I've used probably twice now. It's still serviceable. All that happens is after about four or five, three or four or five times, it starts to degradate around the stencil a bit. And I think that's just heat build up from the stencil process from the uh, electrolysis and that. And then it starts to it starts to get a bit faded around the edges. So, but they're so cheap you can literally throw these away, bin them. I did try double coating this screen, so I gave it one coat, let it dry, gave it another coat. Didn't work. It just would not work. I it, I was having terrible trouble trying to photo etch the acetate onto the screen. So I gave up on that, threw that away, and just gone back to one single coating. Just put a nice even coat on the screen, let it dry. That's what you'll get and you're good to go. It's much better than the Etchematic stencils. It's certainly a hell of a lot cheaper than the Etchematic stencils. You can do, you can do, I don't know, maybe a hundred on a screen like that, on a screen that size. Might cost you five pounds to do it. And that was making stencils for knife makers logos. Any other kind of stuff you want to make stencils for, etching names on your tools, whatever. Thanks for watching guys, thanks to my patrons. Gotta watch out for mozzies at the moment, they're everywhere. See you soon, bye for now.